All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, I'm here today with uh, Kim and Alon from Motion Array. Uh, thank you guys so much for taking um, the the time out of your busy schedule uh, to chat with me today. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I know the community here on YouTube uh, will really appreciate this discussion as well. Um, maybe just to to kick things off here, could you guys quickly just introduce yourselves and uh, and let the viewers know uh, you know who you are and what your role. Uh, is at Motion Ray. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Uh, so I'll start. My name is Alon. Uh, again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm the audio catalog manager um, for the audio in Motion Array. And this is Kim. And my name is Kim. I'm a visual curator at Motion Array and a video creator. Awesome. Um, okay. So I, th I think it's fair to say that, that most musicians and uh, music producers like myself, um, have like a varied uh, and sometimes limited uh, idea of like what happens and how things function uh, on on your end of things. Um, I know you're a small team. Uh, you're uh, mostly based in, in Tel Aviv in Israel. Um, can you sh can you sh share a, a little bit about you know the general process of how things work at Motion Array and like what um, you, you know. What the team looks like in sort of a general sense, uh, like and how things function, like on a daily basis. So our motion array team is built of uh, people who manage the catalog. We have curators, we have team leads, we have uh, data, BI, marketing people, sales, uh, and we all work together to sort of improve the catalog and the marketplace as best as we can all the time. Um, as contributing artists, you'll actually mostly be in interaction with curators, with people such as myself. Uh, we review and curate the different assets in the catalogs. Okay, so let's talk uh, about the users. Uh, and I'd like to get a better sense of like who the users users of Motion Array are. And this is surprisingly um, something that, that it doesn't come up that often in discussions uh, online, uh, in the Discord. Uh, Maya from Motion Array wrote a, a great article about this very subject, which I'm going to link in the description of this video because I think um, that it would be great for for people to to read that. Um, but maybe we could just shed a bit of light on on uh, on the like the typical Motion Array user um, who's using Motion Array and and what are they looking for. So our users are actually um, visual creators from all around the world with a, quite a wide range of ages, between ages of 18 to over 60. So we can see it's quite a large diversity. Um, and that's one of the things that we really do see as important, seeing as we have quite a diverse audience, we also try and have as diverse tracks and assets as possible in our marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, among our users, we have professionals, we have semi-pros, we have amateurs. Um, and we can even see among those um, different sort of creators, we can see content creators, so YouTubers, bloggers, anything to do with social media, as well as uh, video professionals, so people work, working in uh, creating sort of in the creative marketing and the different industries that can be graphic designers or video editors, uh, creative directors, all sorts of professionals, amateurs and semi-pros, as we said. Um, I think one of the things that is most important, sort of the tip, one of the greatest tips that we can sort of provide or insights um, is that if you think of your tracks as actually being uh, paired with visual um, projects, so seeing as most of our uh, users are actually video creators, most of the end projects will actually be tracks that are, as I said, paired with visual uh, aspects. Yeah. And I think um, that sort of having that mindset while you're creating your tracks can really help sort of define and and create that uh, sort of tracks that can really empower and support different projects. So if you're able to think of the different needs of a video creator, uh, that can be different intros or cinematic scenes or TikTok. And if you can really get into the mindset of a video creator, I think you'll be able to create quite a wide variety of tracks that'll be useful for our users. Yeah, that's 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 so great to hear. Um, and I think that it's so important what you mentioned about keeping the visual assets in mind. And 
um, you know, I see a lot of the, the, the end uses of, of the music that I send you guys because uh, some of it is registered with content ID and on the back end of my content ID, I can see which kind of videos that people um, are using my music in and, and see how it's being used. And uh, of, yeah, like you, you said, there's a ton of, uh, you know, um, YouTubers and content creators uh, using Motion Ray. So I think it's really uh, great for people to, to, you know, to understand that. One thing that just came to mind is that do you th figure that tracks um, or uh, when we send audio, um, when we send different versions of the audio, like, you know, like a loop version or a 30 second version, do you think that those types of assets get um, more traction or, or more um, action on, on Motion Array? I think I can answer that. Um, again, uh, having a track and, and multiple versions doesn't promise that this track will get downloaded a thousand times. Mm -hmm. What it does allow is for the user to see that this song has different versions. And then as Kim mentioned, he could understand that he has a flexibility of using this track. Yeah. So again, it doesn't necessarily mean that this track with multiple versions or different lengths will get downloaded a lot of times, but it does increase the chances because our users are looking for files that they can use on different aspects. So if I download a track that has three different versions a 15 seconds a one minute and a full track that helps me be more flexible regarding my visual projects that i could put the track that fits my target the best and and that will increase the chances of the um, music artist to get his track downloaded gotcha. if that makes sense yeah gotcha. i think that maybe um sort of thinking that even having those options, that they can also be useful in future projects. So using a track for a specific need for a specific project means that I also, the minute I have those different options and that's the track that I enjoyed using, I can also think about it in future projects in a different way, obviously, it'll be sort of combined differently within my new project, but it does give me, as Alon said, that flexibility um, of different usages, even if it's the same track. Gotcha, cool. Let's uh, switch gears here and talk about uh, the the staff picks and and the curation. I, yeah, we I mean we have to discuss staff picks uh, specifically too because I think this is obviously a really popular uh, subject uh, in in chats uh, on the Discord community and uh, a lot of the questions that that uh, people uh, throw my way are um, y you know about staff picks. It's understandably uh, you know contributors are are hyper focused. Um, on staff picks because they have an enormous impact on uh, on our download volume, um, which means that you know people like me make more money. So um, how do things work with regards to the curation of the music and where tracks end up on various pages? And I also just want to discuss like uh, you know what are your targets and goals when it comes to curating the music and choosing uh, the tracks which become uh, the staff picks? So I can sort of answer regarding the curation of the staff picks um, and decisions made uh, during that curation, during sort of the, the different ch choices. Um, so I think the first thing and the most important thing is to understand why we actually have staff picks, why our main page is um, sort of has our staff picks. Um, staff picks are all user base so we're thinking of the user at all times while doing stat fix and that can be either existing users who we want them to really feel as though they have value in their subscription so they have sort of a quick reach to the best content that we have to the most relevant content we know that searching for different tracks uh, is sometimes it's, it's a process and uh, there's a lot of inspiration involved you're looking for the perfect track the exact thing that you're that you're sort of searching for your project uh, and that takes time and sometimes just having that those relevant diverse tracks and the, the ones that we think are sort of the best tracks we'll soon get into what are those best tracks um but the ones that we feel that, that can be put up front uh, we want that to be really useful for our sort of existing users another thing we keep in mind is potential users so someone who's coming into our website for the first time or sort of quite a new user um, and the first impressions are important. So we want our best um, assets, our sort of most inspiring pieces to be just at the sort of tip of their hands. Um, and those are two things that we keep in mind. So 
I, I think I also want to add that, uh, again, diversity is very important. Mm -hmm. So by that, by meaning uh, we're looking for good tracks or high quality tracks, it doesn't mean necessarily it's a specific genre. So we're looking for a diverse mm -hmm. genre of high quality tracks on our staff mix. Right. Uh, so that's a good, good thing to remember that it's not only if you make cinematic high quality tracks that would be selected for staff mix. Right. You would have a wide range of, of tracks, good ones, presented on the staff mix. Definitely. So I think one of the things that's really important for us is to make sure that our main page actually represents all of our catalog. So you do have uh, different genres, sort of different moods, different feels, uh, different instruments. So that's really important for us and we make sure that there's a little bit of everything uh, because we do have such a diverse audience, as we said before. Um, another thing that's really important for us for staff picks is actually exposing different artists, seeing as we do have a lot of contributors on our, like, on our marketplace. Uh, we want to actually give our artists an opportunity to be exposed. So we do try and make sure that different artists are in the staff picks. Uh, as we make those decisions. Right, so it's really important for us to try and balance between sort of video-oriented uh, tracks that can be sort of just put on different types of videos and sync quite easily with different types of sort of uh, visuals yeah. to specific either, if it, can, it can be vocals or sort of hip-hops or hip-hop or sort of um, very specific uh, footage. So we're trying to find a balance between video-oriented and specific tracks mm -hmm. um, to really give that sort of variety um, and I think the one of the most important factors is making sure that the things we put on our staff pick are really high quality assets yeah yeah, um, yeah. that's really, really important yeah for sure well, I, I definitely hear um, uh, the diversity in in the in the in the tracks that you choose uh, as staff picks and um, yeah so I think what you're saying is that like that they're there to inspire um, uh, the user, um, and that, that, that makes total sense. Um, just curious, uh, is, is staff pick something that you guys discuss as a team or is it just like, you know, each person kind of has their own, uh, uh, you know, uh, asset to, 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 choose as a staff pick? Is there any, any like, uh, light you can shed on that? It's, it's definitely a team, a team process yeah. that, you know, the tracks are brought up, we discuss it, mm -hmm. we decide which one goes where. Uh, and it's not like someone sits in a room and decides, yeah, I want to put this one or this one, and, and that's it. So it's like yeah. basically we sit in the forum, all the curators, we uh, play the songs, and we decide where to put what. Yeah, there, awesome. are, there are guidelines and there's an alignment between the team, and it's very much a team effort yeah. uh, to make sure the best um, best assets are presented. Yeah. Exactly. That's cool. Cool. So, so I guess uh, a lot of people are wondering. Um, whether a track's placement in either uh, the most popular of the month or year, like any other category other than the staff picks, um, is everything purely algorithmically driven? The answer is yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, I do want to point out that uh, our, our, our search engine presents the most relevant results for the user. Right. Meaning it doesn't necessarily, first of all, not all users filter by uh, most downloaded uh, and even staff picks. So we want our marketplace to present the most relevant results for the user's search. And does a, so so a staff picks uh, downloads, um, does it affect on how long it remains a, a staff pick or does it, or is it you, are you always shuffling them up uh, and, and on a regular basis? We really make sure to, as we said before, um, also provide as much content for our users so we make sure to um, renew our staff picks at least weekly uh, and always make sure that sort of our users and our best assets are sort of always in refreshed. Refresh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, a funny question that I, I got was, uh, you know, sometimes when music is uploaded, it often ends up way down in the charts and it's never seen again. It's sort of it's sort of uh, banished to obscurity. Um, I'm curious what what will happen to all the contributions um, that are that are kind of down in the, the bottom of the charts. Uh, are they going to ever be uh, brought to light again? <laughs> 
I think, again, the answer is yes, and it comes back to the answer I get from the last question. It's all about what the user is, is searching for. Right. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean, again, if you weren't picked for the staff pick, it doesn't mean your asset won't get downloaded. Uh, if someone comes and looks for a specific uh, um, track that he's looking for, he would get it. Every artist should be well aware that whenever he uploads the track, no matter if it was downloaded once or twice, if the user is searching for it, it will see it. Uh, that's what should lead them and, and, and make sure that that's what they follow. Gotcha. I think it's also really important to add here that all of our assets are curated by humans. So we make sure that those search terms really do come up when a user is searching for a certain asset. We make sure to pair those search terms so assets don't get lost. Right. right. I, can, I can even add to that that when an artist uploads a track, he obviously tags the track with the relevant yeah. ones. Yes. But our creators, uh, once they review the track, uh, they add the, the relevant tags. Yeah. So right. if an artist forgot to put or even didn't know that this track should also be tagged by another tag, our curators do it by themselves and they upload the track. So even if he didn't tag it the right way or the specific way, if that tag belongs to that track, it will be there, and once the user searches for that track, it will be presented to them. We've got it covered. <laughs> yeah, sweet. I got you. Okay, cool. Um, so, okay, we got to talk about applications. Uh, uh, probably <laughs> the most question questions that I get are on this subject. Uh, everyone is very, very keen to understand what uh, an ideal applicant looks like to Motion Array, and what are the key factors that you guys look for? Um, I have a very uh, a few very specific questions that come up um, again and again with regards to this topic. So, um, my first question for you guys is: uh, Aside from the quality of the music uh, that's being sent to you, um, and how well that music is suited to the library, are there any external factors? Uh, that you guys take into account, uh, such as uh, web and social media presence, website, uh, online portfolios, and that kind of thing? So um, one of the best or most important thing we're looking for is experience. We're looking for experienced artists. Uh, we want to know that you've been doing what you're doing for a while, that you know what you're doing. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a rich portfolio in another marketplace, mm -hmm. uh, but, we, but a good website is the way to present what you do. So once uh, we'll go over into the application itself, but users or potential artists uh, uh, supply their uh, portfolio, whatever it is, it could be their website, it could be another marketplace, it could be a Spotify page. Um, so we look into that, we go and listen, our curators go and listen uh, to what the artist has to offer. Mm -hmm. um, so I won't say if if someone uploads very good tracks and he doesn't necessarily have lots of experience, uh, we might onboard him. But for the most part, we're looking for experienced artists. So we want to know that you know what it takes to be a, a, a music producer or an artist, or however you want to pronounce it, because um, it doesn't end up with just you know uploading five tracks. This is just the beginning. Um, so we want to make sure that our artists, once they are onboarded, uh, they know what you're doing and they know what's ahead. And I think I'm like I'm going for the next question, but we're looking for like engagement. You know, we want to have artists that are engaged in the marketplace and right. not just applied, supply five tracks, got approved, and that's like we you don't no longer hear from them. So that's nothing. Gotcha. So, so yeah. So the ideal situation for you is to uh, to have artists that are going to continually send uh, music. And maybe if you if I sent you like like five tracks that were amazing, but I have like absolutely no web presence at all, no Spotify, no no uh, no web, uh, no website, nothing. You guys, it, it might l seem to you guys like um, maybe this this dude is, gonna, is sending a few tracks, but he's that that's where it, it, it ends. And I'm not gonna, we're not gonna hear from him again. Yeah. Is, that, is that sort of what you're saying? Yeah, I'm also like the, the, the logic behind it is those five tracks could be nice and that would be presenting the marketplace, but we want users or we want artists basically that have the potential to be good artists on the marketplace, meaning they have a variety of assets, 
the assets will get downloaded, those artists will get warranties. So we're not looking to onboard someone and just say, hey, we got a new artist, great five tracks, and that's it. We want this artist to gain warranties. We want this artist's assets to get downloaded. Right. So thinking about the long term and not necessarily just onboard someone that has five tracks or nice two tracks. Uh, that's why we look for the, you know, the portfolio and the experience, and we want to know what we're dealing with. Makes sense. Okay, let's speak about uh, genres for a second. So, is there, objectively speaking, is there a best genre for first-time applicants um, to write in order to get into the library? Uh, it, you know, would is it corporate? Is it hip hop? Does it matter? Um, are there any genres in particular that you're looking for right now, or are you guys just open to to whatever? So, I think uh, the answer is split in two ways. Uh, first of all, the best genre is the genre you produce the best. What I mean by that is, yeah, I mean, um, international and corporate tracks are always in demand, but it doesn't mean that if you uploaded um, or created a corporate track that it will get downloaded or that your application will get approved. Uh, we're looking for high quality assets. So you can make high quality flamenco and we will, you will get approved regardless of how popular right now this search term or genre is on our marketplace. So I think for us, the message we want to give to the artists is uh, um, apply with what you do best. Uh, creating tracks in a wide range is nice. If you could produce in five, you could do hip hop and corporate and lo-fi and flamenco, that's great. Uh, uh, but we find that most of the time when people apply from different genres, it's hard to be very, very good in a lot of things. Um, so if you do lo-fi as a very good genre and you know how to produce it and it sounds original, we want you to uh, upload and apply to those tracks. That will get you approved more than just uploading five corporate tracks that are you know, mediocre and we don't have much to do with them. Yeah, right, right, right. So. So if I send you like five different genres and they're all really, really, really high level, that's fine. But uh, but most of the time, I think what you're probably seeing from applications is that is that people specialize in certain things. And if that if you are a specialist in like rock or hip hop or whatever, that's probably your safest bet in terms of like, you know, sending an application. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, cool. What is the what's the best way? Uh, to stand out as an applicant, are there are there any um, and are there any deal breakers? Are there things that you see um, that are just like no, like we can't do this, or like uh, I mean, you you must see so many applications. So like maybe you could speak about yeah. like the things that come up again and again, and uh, and what are some some things that are just like wow, like this is a great application. So uh, I think we've mentioned high quality tracks. <laughs> Take time to interview. So yeah. again. Good quality tracks is, this is the first thing we look for, regardless of genre, regardless of anything. Uh, uh, that's the first thing. Uh, we do get a lot of, uh, let's say, in-the-box application or tracks. So uh, I could say that live instruments and vocals are definitely things that stand out. Cool. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you have live instruments or vocals, you'll get approved but it definitely stands out in terms of the curator listening and reviewing a lot of applications. Uh, uh, and, and when we hear those stuff, you know, when you hear a, a, a live instrument, it just clicks. And, and this would, again, it's, it's, it's a positive and a good thing to have. That's not necessarily mean you get approved, but it's a plus uh, to have. Uh, I think regarding deal breakers, um, you know, you'd be surprised of how many applications we get. Um, as I mentioned, we're looking for the portfolio, looking for the experience. So people apply, they either up upload or don't upload their tracks, but you know they don't necessarily leave the, their portfolio. And if they do, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the time it relates to the kind of assets they want to sell on motion already. Hmm. So let's say someone uploaded five lo-fi tracks again, but the portfolio, he used to be a uh, rock guitar player 20 years ago or even 10 years ago uh, uh and then he attaches this portfolio and then we're like we listen to this nice lo-fi tracks that the other motion array or in this application and then we try to see how experienced he is in this genre and we hear a different kind of thing 
So again, it might help us understand his experience and he's been doing it for a while, but it's it's kind of, you know, it's kind of bizarre to have a lo-fi track and then a, a rock uh, portfolio. So I think the advice is try to put uh, the portfolio that represents, and again, and the assets too, we'll talk about later, that represents the type of tracks you want to set on motion array and yeah. not just, hey, I had this album 10 years ago and, and I, you know, that's, that's not the stuff we're looking for. Gotcha. Cool. How does an applicant succeed once they're uh, once they're accepted? I mean, I you, I think something that maybe you guys see is that like people uh, apply, they get in. Uh, once you're in, though, like what's is there any advice for 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 folks once are once they're past you know once they have the foot in the door? Um, yeah. So um, I thought I, I think I mentioned it before, but we're looking for engaged artists. So getting approved whatever track you uploaded is nice and and we're happy to onboard you you'll get a nice welcome email but you know now you're you, it starts so what i mean by that is uh if you really want to get uh, uh your assets downloaded you want to get as much tracks as possible and you want to have uh again high quality tracks so once you're onboarded um the best advice we can give you is continue uploading and not just fade out in terms of like, okay, I got approved and I have those tracks and now I'm going to get, you know, uh, uh, the money flowing in. That's not the case. You should be aware of what's going on, either in trends that are currently happening on Motion Array or yeah. outside trends, but be engaged. Be also like know what our users are looking for or just keep on uploading. Uh, you know, be engaged with the platform uh, and not just, I don't want to say disappear, but just people sometimes tend to just get approved and just wait for things to happen. And and I think the best tip is continue working. Continue working. You have We have a wide uh, ways to understand what's trending. So for uh, approved artists in their motion rate profile, they could see the most recent uh, trending tags so they could know what to look for. Uh, for non-approved uh, 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 artists, they could browse around the website, filter by the most popular, uh, and then understand what is, what's being downloaded or, or trending at the moment. Uh, a quick thing to keep in mind that if you go in December and you look for the most popular, you'll get a lot of Christmas tracks, for example. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you say, yeah, I want to make Christmas. It's, 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 it's happening right now. But then he only uploaded it in January and nobody searches for that kind of stuff on January. Mm -hmm. So we all have to be minded to what's going on again in general and in the, in the industry, but specifically in motion already. So it's like a combination of, of these uh, two. Totally. Okay. Last question uh, if, about this subject is uh, for those who have submitted an application, uh, but the review time has been upwards of like a month or more. Um, what can they do? Is it is it best to reach out just to you guys via email? I know I notice that sometimes applications will will, will get stuck um, uh, or they, they won't move, and people will be wondering what's uh, what's happening there. So um, anything? What what should they do in that case? Uh, so I think I quickly want to go through the, the process of, of, of applying to Motion Array, and then I'll talk about that part. Cool. So first part is signing up as an artist to Motion Array. So you go to our website, you sign up. Uh, once you finish the sign up, you'll automatically be directed to our official application form. You have to fill out all your details, your experience, portfolio, bio, uh, etc. all those fields. Then the last stage, as I mentioned, is uploading the tracks. Uh, so you go to your motionary profile, go to my submission, submit uh, a new track, choose royalty fee music, and literally upload the track. Again, you have to uh, fill in all the details, technical details, uh, and tag and all the stuff. But you know, it's for us to really review the application in depth. We want to read about the artist. We want to listen to his tracks. So once someone applies, and again, you'll be surprised we get. A lot of applications from artists that just put their name out, put their portfolio, and no tracks. And we end up like, okay, I, I really want to have this, this, that the bio sounds great, the story sounds great, but I have no tracks. So, <laughs> and then we do send up reminders 
every couple of days. Like we, we encourage the artists to apply and, and I mean, you already applied to upload these tracks. Um, but again, that's something that you should pay attention to. I know it sounds crazy, but apply, fill out the details and upload the tracks. Uh, this will get you the, the, the most uh, 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 chances of your application to get approved uh, in that sense. Again, we're trying to do our best. If you applied and you did all those stuff and you still haven't got uh, any reaction from us, you can email us at content at motionarray.com and we will apply. Uh, our team is always there to answer. And yeah, that's basically it. Great. Okay, lastly, I just want to touch on communication. Um, I think a lot of users are just uh, probably not aware of how small uh, the audio team is at uh, Motion Ray and how many emails and applications uh, and track submissions uh, that you're dealing with on a, on like a daily basis. Uh, I've got two questions for you here that come up quite often and they, and they might um, be difficult to sort of answer, but maybe you could give us a bit of clarity on the struggles that you guys face with communicating with a large number of contributors. Uh, the first question is, um, often when folks reach out to you uh, by email, uh, they only get a like a pre-written email back that does not answer um, the question uh, specifically in some cases, because I'm assuming the volume um, of emails that you get is quite large. Is it just too high for personalized responses? So uh, I think I'll answer this one. Yeah. Um, when you asked us before about sort of the motion array team, I think we forgot to mention that we have robots in our teams. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, it's really, really important. I think the most important thing to know is that all of our interactions, all of our communication is human based. Yeah. So there's always a person sitting behind those responses. Um, we do use common responses just to make things quicker because we get dozens of emails daily and we want this interaction to be as efficient as possible. So we use common responses, but the, as I said, there's always a person, a, a curator sitting and writing these emails and trying to make them as relevant and efficient as possible. Um, I want to so, add here yeah. that also the uh, review process is the same. I mean, yes. it's all tracks that are being submitted. Every application is being reviewed by a human being, by the team. Yep. It's mm -hmm. not uh, nothing automated. Someone downloads all the tracks, opens it up, listens to every tracks, reads every detail, goes to the portfolio. Nothing is being uh, machined or AI and none of those stuff. Um, so you so haven't you haven't hired a chat GPT robot uh, yet? No. Uh, no. That's literally us. <laughs> yeah. um, I think also this would be a great sort of a chance to mention you, you started off by saying that there, there's a great article um, about getting to know our users. So mm -hmm. I think uh, going to the Motion Array site in the Help Center, you'll see that we have articles that are written for our contributors. So we want to make this as easy and just as, um, I think, just as useful as possible. So we have yeah. different articles about how to get to know our users, what's trending, tips and tricks on uploads. And there's just so much information there yeah. because we really want to make this process great. So yeah. use those, use those insights, use those articles. And it's, it's also constantly updated. So, yeah. so you could find what you need. And, and even if you, if you read everything the next week or uh, the week after you get a, a, a new article. So yeah. uh, it's a very uh, good tip for people to just go on, go to the help center and just read uh, the articles we did for artists. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, last question on this is, uh, do you guys foresee a way that, um, and this pertains to our, this, this, uh, this previous discussion here, is, do you foresee a way that motion rate could provide, uh, the, the, the musicians or the music producers that are submitting tracks, um, a bit more detail as to why their track was rejected, um, or, you know, not high enough quality uh, for the library via maybe like a list of options such as, uh, you know, mix quality is not up to our standards, arrangements not suitable, uh, stylistically not the great fit. Uh, when, when a track gets rejected, we don't get much information as to why that is. Could you, could you um, tell the viewers like why, why things are that way specifically? Yeah. Um, so again, we get thousands of email of applications with uh, tracks inside them. So it's kind of hard to just give a specific answer for every tech 
that, that was uh, rejected in the application. We do send out if it's a legal thing. We do mention it in, mm -hmm. in our, uh, our response email. Uh, I do want to point out that artists that already are onboarded and they upload tracks and the curators either reject it or needs work for the majority of the time, the curator explains exactly what needs to be done. So let's say you upload the track, either uh, the volume is too high or the tagging or the title or something of the preview file, you get, if you look in the email you get from the curators, it will be mentioned and you get all the details. Uh, um, so if this, again, if this helps you uh, like understand the situation we're, we're handling with. So, yeah. so the minute a yeah. track um, does need some specific, there's a specific issue that can be fixed, uh, we won't reject automatically the track. We will try to communicate this with the artist and explain what needs to be done to receive this track and accept it because we do want yeah. as much content, yeah. good content, on our marketplace as possible so we do try and make this um, and yeah. and again the most common reason for rejection is quality yeah. mm -hmm. um i know this comes up again and again and again we mentioned it like 40 times in less 30 minutes but that's the main reason tracks get rejected yeah uh, so yeah. keep that in mind yeah. Well, I think that's a good place to leave it. Uh, I, is there anything else that you guys would like to add or, or um, anything that we missed here that uh, I'm sure I probably missed something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anything else that you guys would like to let the viewers know? Um, I'm just excited to sort of hear, hear what you have. Yeah, and, and also offer advice uh, yeah. to, to new and potential artists. Uh, we're happy for having this stage and want to thank you uh, for this opportunity yeah. and welcome and invite all artists to uh, apply, uh, listen to what we just said yes. and apply. Uh, and we can't hey, wait to hear your tracks. Yes, um, for sure. Awesome. I, I will be referring a lot of people to this uh, to this video. I know that a lot of people are, are very excited to uh, potentially work with you guys uh, throughout this year. Um, I just want to say uh, on, a, on a final note here that um, it's been a real pleasure hosting you guys uh, on this YouTube channel. Um, and, you know, I, as you guys know, I've made quite a few videos uh, over the last year or so uh, about Motion Array. So this has really been uh, exciting to chat with uh, the team members themselves. And uh, I think that you guys do a fantastic job of, uh, of curating and, and running the library. And uh, it's, it's been a very important part of my journey in, in music licensing. Um, so, um, yeah, thanks for your hard work. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, to sending you guys lots of music this year and uh, and working together thank, thank you, you very much. thanks for having us <laughs> my pleasure <laughs>